I was at, of all places, my local old school Napa Auto Parts store. And they had found a couple of these in the attic, probably from the previous owner had a special or promotion or something from, I don't know, the 70s. And I had been talking about getting an external antenna for the TV repair videos. And this just popped up. And this is actually perfect. You know what they call this? A cat's whisker antenna. And this is absolutely perfect. The cat's whisker is a broadband UHF antenna designed to operate channel 14 through UHF 14 through 83. And they talk about with the reflector, without the reflector. They talk about uh, using a phasing connection there to, to gang them up and get more gain. Uh, modification for difficult translator areas so this this is going to be good so getting this ladder line connected was not the easiest thing it was not easy to strip that insulation but we're good we're ready to go up on the roof with it and point it at Mount Wilson and then we'll have good solid digital TV Here we have a little end-of-the-line dinner action. RCA CTC 16 Resurrection Part 4. Hopefully this is the final part. Part 3 was very long, but it was very interesting and educational. I've never seen so much carbon tracking and flare-outs and fire and smoke come out of any resurrection I've done right at the end we had a decent decent is relative black and white picture uh, this CRT is kind of tired we had it picking up channel 6 radio Guadalupe TV over the air low power analog we watched some news on it I think you should if you haven't go check out the it, all of part three it's a movie it's two hours uh, also in part three I had replaced the high voltage rectifier with this NTE 508 silicon solid state to try and cut down on the radiation exposure because I'm using a, a flyback from a CTC 15 that doesn't quite fit this thing failed so the solid state rectifiers are not a suitable replacement we're going to we also lost functionality of the vertical hold control so that's probably either due to carbon tracking or a bad capacitor or a bad wire we'll have to dig into that a little bit this morning here's what I mean by the high voltage cage being open I'm doing an experiment where I'm using a flyback out of a CTC 15 which works perfect it's just physically it would take quite a bit to get it adapted in there so that it would completely be shielded and covered by the CTC 16 the 15 is an older version of this chassis um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that uh, high voltage rectifier with one of those lead covered GE ones and hopefully it's a higher filament current but hopefully it'll work because I'm trying to minimize my x-ray exposure here so starting at the vertical hold control here we have 786 ohms to ground that's 0.786 K and if you take a look at the vertical hold control it's 750 K and then we have a capacitor a 2200 so 0 0.0022 going to ground and then we have 150 K so either we have carbon tracking that wire comes to here and it's the same thing it's 700 and 86 ohms so either we have a bad capacitor here or we have carbon tracking or something conductive on the board so first thing I'm going to do is lift that capacitor 
and that capacitor is that little blue one right there. I don't know if I can focus in on that, not really. I had, I think those are tubular ceramics. I had two of those short in the IF where you see these disc capacitors. I had two of those in part three short and go up in smoke and flames in the IF. So it's possible that pressure washing this damaged those little ceramic capacitors and there's a lot of them. There's the blue one there, there's a yellow one here. And then there's a whole bunch of blue and yellow ones in the IF strip. And they're slowly all failing. And the only thing I can think of is, because I've never seen those fail before, is the pressure washing with to, to clean up the rodent stuff killed them. I'm going to bet that thing is shorted. Well, I got it out, and it's kind of the same... I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's the same as the ones in the IF that failed. They, they're they black. They're hollow in the middle and they're all black. So I'm thinking maybe water got into these. So yeah, don't pressure wash your stuff. That was a mistake. It's uh, The short is gone now because I'm, I'm going to adjust the... Uh, we're at uh, 870K now and I'm I'm adjusting the horizontal, I mean the vertical hold control. And I, I have full range of adjustment now on the vertical hold. So it was definitely, this capacitor was shorted. So I'm just going to replace that probably with a, I don't know, a disc or whatever I have laying around here. There's our capacitor replaced. I just took one, a 222 off of here. Um, beware of these tubular capacitors, these little yellow and blue things. I'm almost tempted to change that one. I have no idea what it does. That one looks like a one, a thousand maybe. Three DS3. Contains 55% lead oxide. Toxic by ingestion. Do not eat the vacuum tube. Wash hands thoroughly after contact. X-ray protection. This is a tube that General Electric used in their color TVs. I think they might have had a problem with exceeding the X-ray accumulation limits. So I hope this works. That way I can run it with the can open. In order to make the 3DS3 lead shielded tube work, I need to move the wire from pin 2 to pin 3 and bridge pin 6 to pin 7. And this might actually not work because this metal can is connected to uh, the high voltage and that might arc to the jacket on the 6DS3. Okay, the 3DS3 seems to be working just fine. For some reason, when I first turned it on, I started red plating the horizontal output tube. I think it was because I moved the oscillator and it wasn't touching in the crappy base, but I think I did some damage to it, but uh, it's up and running now. So it looks good. So I'm radiation free once again. This is fish paper. This should stop any arcing between the lead sleeve and the socket. I'm hooked to the VG91 and let me see here. Let's see how it lines up today. I'm on channel four into the tuner. And I guess the sink, the sink tube is not sinking. So let me, there we go. That's pretty good. That's contrast. 
Okay, wow, we have working vertical hold now. This is horizontal. Boy, that's touchy. It's kind of soft. Straighten the yoke out a little bit. Cathode current is right on 180. Uh, let's see what our high voltage is. High voltage is 21. I'm going to clamp it down a little bit. That's up, down. It's turning the high voltage down. clamp the high voltage. Right there. These are our vertical controls. I don't mind under scanning the vertical a little. The tube runs a hell of a lot cooler. Beautiful. That's weird. I turn the RF up and it loses sync. I think the uh, phase detector diode is dead. Not bad. Turning the RF up, I'm at five volts right now. So we're looking pretty good here. That's with the anti-radiation tube. I guess the... Yeah, it's okay. It looks, it, it looks more in the center than on the camera. It looks like it's down and yeah, it's not. It looks good. Yeah, I'm uh, very happy with this. If you've been following this whole thing, it's really amazing how far I've come with it. And definitely. Tonight is the last night of the RNC, and DT is going to speak. And there's definitely some interesting stuff going on. This will also be the first time I use the new antenna on the roof. So we should have a nice solid signal with no breakups. I know the politics bother some people, but nah, that's just the way I roll. So. I haven't fixed the color demod yet. My goal was to have the TV fully working by the time the uh, first debate came along, but there's always a bunch of talk about the debates not happening because, well, use your own judgment on that. So I'm going to sit out here and let this thing run tonight. God, it is dark. It is, this CRT looks so bad. It is so dark, even though the CRT tested pretty strong, it is still a dark, crappy picture.
it's almost unwatchable out here in uh, kind of the mystic hour right now and there's some horizontal instability which could be the uh, phase detector diodes I noticed the horizontal hold control is very touchy which is usually bad zinc or amazon.com see that instability there so I'm gonna let it run and watch probably two hours of this Tonight, a convention speech like we've never seen before. What looks like a campaign rally on government property. The South Lawn of the White House is now an outdoor convention hall. Americans are exhausted, trying to keep up with the latest list of approved words and phrases and the ever more restrictive political decrees. Many things have a different name now, and the rules are constantly changing. The goal of cancel culture is to make decent Americans live in fear of being fired, expelled, shamed, humiliated, and driven from society as we know it. The far left wants to coerce you into saying what you know to be false and scare you out of saying what you know to be true. Very sad. A viewer picked up a CTC-12 combo unit, you know, with the radio and record player. And all he wanted was the radio and, I don't know, the speakers or something. So he contacted me and offered to send the chassis. And I really appreciate this. I'm uh, scared to ask how much this costs to ship this because this box is massive. Um... Let's see how it's packed. This should be a CTC, RCA, CTC-12 chassis. And this right here is an RCA CTC-12 chassis that we've been pulling uh, parts off of to fix the, resurrect the RCA CTC-16. This, this is the 16 right here. This is the 12. So, uh, some upgrades between 12 and 16, but a lot of compatible parts. So let's, uh, let's open this insanely packaged box. This is huge. Maybe this will be filled with Chinese hybrid GMO toxic seeds that we can plant. Talk about unconventional old school semi tribal warfare. Start sending seeds, just random seeds. Wow, look at this. Here's the purity ring. We could probably definitely use this on the 16. It's getting loose. Let's see what we got here. This is... Yeah, this is not something I need. The 16 has degaussing. A bold look of Kohler. This is American made. This is good stuff. Good bathroom fixtures, at least. Most of it was made in America. I don't know. That's kind of irrelevant. Okay, there's a chassis in here. Wow, look at how clean that is compared to this 16 we've been resurrecting. Now he did tell me that he had to cut the wires because of the way it was installed in the combo unit or something.
in this neat looking at oh wow look at that so I wonder why he would have to cut the wires but I'm not going to question it the way this it was installed in a combo this might not have been in the front in fact it doesn't look like it was if you look at the way that tuner is laid out let's take a look at the flyback it's got some hours on it there it's the original flyback some it's got lost some wax but that doesn't necessarily would this work in a CTC 16? Absolutely, you'd have to figure it out, but these flybacks are pretty interchangeable between like the the roundies and the rectangulars. Of course, the roundy flyback won't work in a rectangular or the other way around, but this would work in a 12, 15, 16. Wow, the 12 uses uh, the old 8-pin. I knew it used the 8-pin for the def uh, vertical, but I wonder if these tubes are the same as the 16. If nothing else, I could always... Uh, always just use the whole tuner, couldn't I, in the 16? remote sensor looks a little bit better than the one on the 16 although I'm not going to do anything with the remote amp amplifier or getting the remote to work I'm having a hard enough time just getting the TV itself to work well what I was gonna do is I was gonna put this in the 16 and get the chassis working I bet this chassis works minus maybe a few small issues but with all the wires cut I don't think it's gonna be worth the time to try and splice it all back together just to show the the uh, thing works so I'm gonna say this is just a parts parts chassis and I do appreciate it it will go to good use power good power transformer probably a good flyback vertical output I'm gonna assume that's probably the same oh this coil here A lot of these inductors I can use in the 16, the 620 microhenry peaking coils, the oscillator coil, the tube shields. Wonder where the video output tube went. I didn't see that in the box. Um, yeah, this is definitely it's dusty, but I think it's low hour. I think this was a low hour set. It's time to repopulate the coils and get the the uh, color demod board working uh, that'll be the final part of this and hopefully we wrap it up with some debate action in the previous video we went over a bunch of the carbon tracking and how these uh, there were a lot of comments on how these tubular ceramic capacitors don't deal with any kind of liquid and there were also comments about why well, I should have let it dry out more than whatever. It actually, after I pressure washed it, dried out over for over a week in uh, fairly hot conditions. It's been really hot out here. So just because the video seems that it happens all in an hour, it doesn't. These videos happen, a resurrection like this, happens over the course of several weeks as I get time uh, to spend on them so repopulate the coils uh, in the previous video when we had carbon tracking under this coil that was part two I think we're on point part four no that was part three I think we're on part four now although I could be off when this carbon tracked this 1.5 K resistor right here went down to like nothing so I'm gonna replace that when these carbon resistors get overheated the resistance drops 
looks like it's dropped about 829 ohms meter is kind of dying I think so might be time to get a new meter with these coils if I remember correctly this one this one and I think this one are the chroma band pass so these ones need to actually be aligned with the sweep preferably this one maybe it's just these three anyway that's the oscillator so that we just adjust to stop the color bars from rolling and get the color to lock in that one's not a big deal and maybe it's these two that we hook a VTVM up somewhere here in peak so we don't because we're not changing these two or replacing them then we don't have to do a chroma alignment on this which is a good thing because we're already dealing with enough problems not to have to you know hopefully not probably have bad tube sockets and all the rest to try and figure out how to align it would be a real pain these color burst crystals do go bad um, they suffer from the same kind of silver migration that IF transformers do and um, they're easily they used to be you could find them at any electronics store I don't know about now but yeah they're they're pretty common I don't think it'd be hard to find them and the symptoms are the oscillator won't run or you can't get it on frequency or it constantly drifts you should have, you should be able to adjust that coil once and get it to lock and it should stay there without having to repeat adjust so I'm slowly getting this thing together I got that smoked resistor out of there this uh, vacuum filled transistor bulb right here the oscillator requires a shield and this just broke off this is the little ground Scribble Deemler that hooks that uh, grounds the shield and I've seen these RCA sets just not work at all unless this shield is in place so with that said I wonder if I could solder to this this almost looks galvanized okay you know it's like whatever it's a resurrection right so just as long as it resurrects that's all we care about so I, yeah I just put a piece of uh, tinned copper wire there because I, I like I said I've seen where if this shield is not in place and not grounded on this oscillator tube it will not work so I think the next step before we go any further is we put it back together in fact I think I'll put this tube in this 6GH8 6GH8 um, and then we should do some check the oscillator with the scope make sure it's running I'd rather be carbon tracking. Let's see, do we have anything glowing in here? Speaking of carbon tracking, I think the cat is carbon tracking. Lizard bones. Anyway, uh, here we go. So I'm clamped on to the oscillator with the scope, and is this going to show up? Oh, look at that. That looks nice. We have... I'm moving the tube around, and it looks good. I'm going to pull the tube out. Okay. Looks like we have color oscillator workage. 6GH8 is 6GH8ing. That's an interesting smell. Uh, it doesn't seem stable. The amplitude of it, well, was changing. Yeah, there it goes. 
See the amplitude moving around, and if I move, if I move uh, the tube around, that doesn't change. Check out the burst crystal in the CTC12 chassis. This is what you call a vacuum-filled crystal bulb. All of our coils and tubes are populated on the color demod board. Um, I have the tint control sit, set in the middle and the color control almost at max. What we're going to do is we're going to use the vector scope to check color function and maybe go through a little bit of the alignment. What this does is this displays the color demodulation in a flower pattern. If it's working right and if the flower is spinning then uh, it's not locked, etc. So what this does is this produces color bars, your standard color bars, and then it's like a scope that hooks to the solid, solid colored uh, red, green, and blue wires that come out of the CRT. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this up, make sure nothing carbon tracks and catches fire to start off. And I almost think I can do this. I think I can do this without the horizontal output connected, hopefully. So I'm hooked up to our three points here. I'm fed into the tuner. All right, here we go. I'm on standby. Ooh, it looks like there's actually a little little color there. Uh, I don't know if all the tubes are making contact, but let's see if I turn it to vertical lines, it goes away. So I'm going to adjust the fine tuning. Ooh. I don't even know if I'm on the right channel here. Okay, okay I, I pulled this tube out and I lost the flower, but here it comes back again. And yeah, it looks like crap, it's spinning super fast. Um, okay, our color information is definitely getting through. 100% because if I pull that tube out there it goes away if I pull the oscillator out it goes away the other tubes control the oscillator frequency uh, they're like a phase lock I cannot adjust the coil to get the thing to lock in the flower is just spinning I know it's hard to see here but so could be the crystals bad. I might try and follow the SAMs and adjust to peak um, the coils I replaced to make sure that setup is working. I gave up on trying to use the tuner with this thing because I can't see the picture right now because it's so bright out here and the CRT is so weak. So I went to this and I have this on color bars. Uh, and if you could see the front, it's a barber pulling rainbow, which is is the same as this spinning flower, which is that the uh, uh, oscillator frequency, the 3.58s, is way off. So I'm going to go by the SAMs, and I'm going to peak these coils the way it says. And then I'll try and adjust that, but I think the crystal might be bad. Okay, I have been through the entire alignment procedure here. And it's called uh, color AFC alignment. And I just followed these directions. It's pretty simple. And 
I cannot get this oscillator to lock in and I don't know if the crystal is bad I don't know if there's something else but I sh I think I should be able to adjust I should be able to adjust this without the burst tube because what the burst does is it keeps it pings the oscillator and keeps it locked in so I should be able to adjust this and get get it to just float without that meaning like get the horizontal to float without the AFC diodes you can get it just to kind of float so it'd be a slow moving barber polling coloring coloring booking thinging toddler thinging age three to two so what I believe I need to do now is change the crystal because I can't uh, it's just spinning like crazy it's spinning so fast you can't even see it I took the glass bulb crystal out of the 12 chassis. Here's the one that was in there. It looks a little whatever. So we'll try that. We'll see if we get any different response. All right, I think my patience is starting to run out here. So we still got the spinny thing here. I can't get it to lock in and yeah, if you look at the front of the CRT it's just a rolling rainbow of colors so I've got a frequency counter I think we're supposed to be at 3.5897 so we're at 3.57 so if I turn this off it doesn't change so the burst is not affecting it at all the burst is supposed to lock it dead on frequency and on phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this. Oh. Why is turning the oscillator coil having no effect? What? going on here ha turning this is having no effect on the frequency I mean that's the core basically out it's not having any yeah that's I think that's too slow Actually, this is three five seven nine five four five three five seven nine five four five Huh I guess they just say three point five eight megahertz crystal just to round it off So this is still too slow if this is accurate if that thing is accurate it needs to go up a little bit. I got it on the bench here and the oscillator will actually run on the bench with the horizontal output disconnected. With the crystal out it doesn't run at all so I guess that's a given isn't it? Alright with the core most of the way out uh, so kind of at the peak frequency right the core being out would uh, speed it up the most. So if I put this crystal in we get 3.579129 579129 that's with that one. Let's try this one. That's why I'm wearing gloves because I'm sticking my hands in where there's 400 volts DC. 3.578 538. This one's too slow. That one's even slower. Let me get a new one. Okay, this one looks kind of new. Let's try this one. Uh, such a professional way of doing things.
3.579284, which is getting closer. Okay, let's try this one. 3.58 China. Oh, let's try this one. Okay, here we go. The 3.58288, that one's fast. We'll try putting that one in there. Okay, Chino Crystal has been installed. And it is faster, 3.58. I'm going to turn the core down into the, the slug down into the... Boy, it doesn't allow you to bend this very far, does it? Okay, so to, to set the oscillator coil, you short pin J to ground, which takes the burst damp and everything back behind the oscillator out of the circuit, which is a test point on the board right there. You short that to ground, adjust A16, which is that oscillator coil, until color bars stand still or drift slowly, which would mean the flower rotates slowly. Uh, so, for some reason, I, I just, I have very limited control over the speed of that oscillator with this adjustment, which doesn't seem right. It seems like it should tweak it much more. That is the right oscillator coil, I'm 100% sure. I am going to cheat a little bit because I am getting burned out. This is a different CTC-16. It's working, it has not been abused. And I'm clipped on to the same place. I should pull the horizontal output tube out. And our oscillator here is running at 3.579607. It's supposed to be, the crystal is 545. I'm going to try adjusting this and see how much variability I get. Okay, I know this is dark, but here goes. Turning it out. I get quite a bit here. Uh, where am I here? I'm not out yet. Let's see. Seems like I'm speeding up again. Wow, that thing must have be driven must have be driven all the way down in. So I get almost Oh, the core just came out. Oops. So this is you get almost a kilohertz worth of worth of uh, adjustment. So with the slug almost all the way out, or all the way out, if I just take the slug out, I get 3.5799. 3.5799. So I almost get to 3.58. I'm going to drive it all the way in. So, my slowest speed with the core in the middle is about 3.90. See, I can, I can vary it about 800. 800 hertz? Is that right? So, I can vary it about through the range of where it should be from about 3.5790 to 3.5799. Three three and 3.5795 is about where I need to be in order for the 
burst and phase detection to lock it in. So why can I not vary that other one? What's going on? Okay, uh, the coil in the other set tweaked it almost a thousand. This one only tweaks it ten. or 20 or hardly anything. Okay, that's the core all the way out. I'm going in with it. So like 20. And the other one tweaks at like 800 is the coil. I'm going to try changing the coil. I'm at a complete loss here. Here's a, a brand new oscillator coil. Well, I don't know how, but I put a different crystal in there in that new coil, and I got it adjusted to 3.579545. It's, it's moving around, but that's close enough to where the phase the thing should be able to phase it in. I put the glass crystal back in and I had to unscrew the thing several more turns but I got it up where it should be or pretty close to it so I don't know this is the exact same part number I don't know if it has shorted turns on it all I know is that I've spent about the past four hours there we go not locking in though. So if I turn the oscillator slug, that's turning the oscillator slug. So there it is. First sign of color demodulation and Yes, the green is very weak on this CRT. We know that. And here's sort of what this is supposed to look like. Hope that's showing up. It's not great, but for what this thing is, it's pretty good. I, what I think would improve this thing uh, at this point would be new horizontal phase detector diodes, and a new tube socket and the sink separator. Because the horizontal hold is so touchy, I am going to replace this horizontal phase detector diode with these that I took off of here. These are 1N4448 uh, small signal fast switching diodes. It's, phase detector is really not critical. A lot of the times I'll use one of these just a high-speed diode. There are our two new signal diodes on the bottom. And what I did, because, you know, I want to keep the aesthetic appeal of this, is I just cut two of the wires off the original phase detector and left it in there. Wouldn't want to make this thing look modified, this beautiful turd. News right now on CBS 2 News at 5.30 p.m. And more in our breaking news from the top of this newscast, the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She died at her Washington, D.C. home today at the age of 87 from metastatic pancreatic cancer. Ginsburg was part of the liberal wing of the court and in recent years became somewhat of a rock star to her admirers who lovingly called her the notorious RBG. She was nominated to the court by... Well, RBG has been reincarnated into RBG decoding in this television. She never considered stepping down. So, it's kind of the first thing out of this TV. Our nation has lost a jurist of historic stature. We at the Supreme With the color demod and everything working. We will have continuing coverage of... And yeah, it is working a little bit better with those diodes Our replaced. News now. You are looking live from Sky 2 with the Bobcat fire in the Antelope Valley that continues to rage. 
Homes have burned in the Juniper Hills area on the northeast side of the fire. This CRT is so dark, uh, is so CNC bad. Chef No One continues our breaking coverage live near 106th Street and SEMA Mesa. I thought it might be interesting to look at that frequency of that color oscillator with the color actually locked in on the set. And it's. Uh, and the Hyundai Tucson helps make sure they stay little by alerting you if you drift out of your three point five seven nine five four four. Because unlike your and it moves shirt, around a little bit, but that could be the Sunday. The longer you look, that could be the uh, now frequency counter too. The first debate is a day away, and the set's pretty much ready to go. I'm just gonna. Do a little final purity and convergence this evening when it gets a little darker. We're all pretty much good to go here. I stuck the lid back on the IF can and we'll straighten the yoke up tonight. We got our lead jacketed tube in there. I got the uh, color demod board covered up to keep the ash off of it. Resurrection was to get it to work with a color picture for the first presidential debate. And they are saying right now that the first presidential debate might be the all-time number one most viewed event ever been lining everything up as best I can and kind of go over what we got here so this gap right here on the right side is due to a weak horizontal output tube and yeah I don't want to put a good horizontal output tube in this thing and red plate it if something goes wrong and ruin a $35 $40 tube for this set here's our convergence which is a little bit hard to see. I've done as best as I have possibly been able to do with it. Uh, basically in the the middle here is pretty good. Over here this is adjusted by the coils on the convergence assembly. They make no change. It makes no effect. Basically, I think the selenium diode pack on the convergence assembly is bad, but I'm not even going to get into diagnosing that because it's, it's, TV's not worth it. The CRT is really, really in bad shape. We think it's gassy because it tests. It tests pretty strong, but yet it acts extremely weak. So here's grayscale, pretty pitiful. This is our standard color bars. And yeah, they, they look okay. And I uh, adjusted it so the tint control is about in the middle. It's our standard color bars. It's our EIA color field, which yeah, you know, ex extremely bad looking. It's adjusting the contrast up and down. Just all the... And it looks better in the camera than it does. Yeah, it should actually be sort of like that. But look at how there's this bleeding and shadowing blue into the... Yeah, it's just, it's bad, so. There's bleeding, green bleeding in right here, and there's blue bleeding in here, and the, it's it's not good. It's, yeah, that looks good. So, with the debates, what will we have? Well, we'll have probably a lot of high contrast red, white, and blue. Um, that's usually what they try and do with these debates. A lot of flag waving, you know, black P 
pitch black suit with a bright red tie or pitch black suit with a bright blue tie. Very predictable. And then a lot of high contrast colors. So, okay, well, it's the first debate tonight. And I had set a goal for myself to resurrect this CTC-16 for the first debate, so I think I made my goal. I got a full-color picture here on a very weak CRT. For the special occasion, I'm using the professional rack mount modulator. So I'm coming off my new rooftop antenna into my crappy RCA converter box and I'm taking the composite out of the converter box and I'm going into the uh, rack mount modulator and then from the rack mount modulator I'm coming into the TV right here I have nothing no funny modifications this is a hundred percent going in on channel three um, CRT is very weak. It's all here. It's all working. Um, my wattage draw is 281 for the TV. So I was thinking about EOLing this TV live, but I've received a bunch of uh, messages asking for parts off of this set. So. I'm going to do the responsible thing and it will get parted out in the next couple days and those parts will get sent to the people that need them for their sets. So anyway, we're just waiting for 6 o'clock. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record the whole debate and uh, I'll just put a few highlights into, the, uh, into this video. So. CTC 16 Resurrection, one of the absolute worst. And I think I'm going to do another resurrection for the next debate. The next and final part to this video is the set running about two and a half hours during the 2020 first presidential debate. The sound was excellent and performed very well. The picture was stable with full color, but the bad CRT really gives the impression that these old sets have a crappy picture which they don't so so don't judge the overall performance of these older sets by the picture you see a fully restored roundy with a good strong CRT produces a pretty impressive picture which this does not have also I had the camera bitrate turned way down to 3 and the size is being upscaled from 960 to 1080 so I did that just to save space. So here goes. This is a battle we will win and we'll do it together. Former Vice President Joe Biden. This is the most important election in the history of our country. President Donald Trump. Maybe he's going to be great at the debate. You know, he's been doing it for 47 years. The first presidential debate. Have you begun to prepare for debates against President Trump? I can hardly wait. Good evening, I'm Nora O'Donnell with Gail King and John Dickerson in the nation's capital, and we are just moments away from the first presidential debate between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. After months of lobbying long-distance attacks, aides for both candidates say tonight the gloves and the masks will come off. President Trump, you nominated Amy Coney Barrett over the weekend to succeed the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the court. You say the Constitution is clear about your obligation and the Senate's to consider a nominee to the court. Vice President Biden, you say that this is an effort by the President and Republicans to jam through an appointment and what you call an abuse of power. My first question to both of you tonight, why are you right in the argument you make and your opponent wrong and where do you think a Justice Barrett would take the court? 
President Trump, in this first segment, you go first, two minutes. Thank you very much, Chris. I will tell you very simply, we won the election. Elections have consequences. We have the Senate. We have the White House. And we have a phenomenal nominee, respected by all, top, top academic, uh, good in every way, good in every way. Just lost the left. You agreed with Bernie Sanders on a plan. How, uh, folks, absolutely folks do you have any idea what this is doing? Mr. Do you have any idea? Socialized medicine. Mr. President. Uh, i tell you what. Let your senators know how you strongly you feel. Let, vote now. You pack the Make court? sure you, in fact, let people know you're a senator. I'm not going to answer the question. Why because, would you answer that because question? Because the question is, of, the question Supreme is, Court is the radical question, left. Will you shut up, man? Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This Who's is on your so list? right, gentlemen. This is, I think this is so unprecedented. We have ended this segment. We're going to move on to the second segment. That was really a pro productive segment, wasn't it? <laughs> Keep yapping, man. The people understand, Jeff. <laughs> they Forty-seven do. years, you've yeah. done nothing. They understand. Oh, okay. All right. The reopenings and the fact. Well, he wants to shut down this country, oh. and I want to keep it open. And we you did a great thing by shutting it down. Wait a minute, Judge. Let, 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 let me shut you down for a second, Judge, just for one second. We want to. He wants to shut down the country. We just went through it. We had to because we didn't know anything about the disease. Now we found that elderly people with heart problems and uh, diabetes and different problems are very, very vulnerable. We learned a lot. Young children aren't. Uh, even younger people aren't. We've learned a lot. But he wants to shut it down. More people will be hurt by continuing. If you look at Pennsylvania, if you look at certain states that have been shut down, they have Democrat governors all. One of the reasons they're shut down is because they want to keep it shut down until after the election on yeah. November 3rd. I want to move on to another subject. I want to move on to another subject. But those, I, I but those move, states, those states are not subject. doing well that are shut I, down. Right right now. Respond uh, to that. President shut Trump, down you have country. begun you got to open these states up. It's not fair. You're talking about almost it's like being in prison. And you look at what's going on with divorce. Look at what's going on with alcoholism and drugs. It's a very, very sad thing. And he'll close down the whole country. This guy will close down the whole country and destroy our country. Our country is coming back incredibly well, setting records as it does it. We don't need somebody to come in and say, let's shut it down. And you'll get to see it. I, I, and you'll get to when? see it. But let me just tell you. But let me just tell you. But why didn't I you do it over 20, in the last 25 no, years? No, because you were president. Why did you do it over because you weren't president screwing no, 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 things no. up. You were a senator. And You're the, the worst way, you president vice, America has ever had. Hey, hey, Come Joe, on. Let me, let me just tell you, Joe. I've done more in in 47 months. I've done more than you've done in 47 years, Joe. Four. We have the highest defi trade deficit China with ate Mexico. Your lunch, All right, eight eight percent. Percent. And, and, China ate your no. lunch, Joe. And no wonder your son goes in and he takes out... He takes out billions of dollars, takes out billions of dollars to manage, he makes millions of dollars. And also, Simply while we're at true. it, why is yeah. it, just out of curiosity, the mayor of Moscow's wife gave your son three and a half million dollars. What did he true. do to deserve it? That what did he do with Barista to of deserve one hundred eighty-three thousand dollars? None of that, that, that is true. Not an answer. Not none of that is true. Oh, really? He totally didn't give it no, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. Totally, President, please. Totally discredited. Totally discredited. I'm talking about you. All right, that's the, end of the, that's the end of the segment. We're, mov we're moving on. It didn't take that. Well, Vice it's President, a, it's, it's, no. Can it's, I be honest? It's a very important try to question. Be honest. No, I, I, I stood, stood up. No, I, 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 the answer to the question is no. Ukraine. No, I, sir. With a billion sir, dollars, if you get rid of it, you know what? You're not true. You're doing it. You're going to have it. True. Gentlemen, but are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, but do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what, what, what are you what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them what do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right like me to condemn? White proud supremacists boys. and right the proud, proud boys. Like stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left because this is not a right his wing own, problem. This is, this is a left wing. This is a left wing. White supremacist. Antifa is an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not militia. That's what his FBI. 
his okay. FBI director Gentlemen, said. Well, then, you know what? No, no, that we're, done, we're done, sir. Everybody, we're moving on to the next. We're moving on to the next. That's not an idea. Everybody in your administration tells you the truth is a bad idea. Can I tell you what? You have no idea. Antifa is a dangerous radical group. All right, gentlemen, we're now moving on to the Trump and Biden records. They'll overthrow you. When a president, I'm going to ask a question. It's going to be a fair election. If it's a fair election, I am 100% on board. But if I see tens of thousands of ballots being manipulated, I can't go along with that. And I'll tell you what, from a common sense, I'll tell you what it means. It means you have a fraudulent election. You're sending you out 80 do? million ballots. They're not, they're not equipped to. These people aren't equipped to handle it. Number one. Number two. Okay. They cheat. They cheat. Hey, they found ballots in a waste paper basket three sure. days ago, and they all had the name all right. military ballots. They were military. They all had the name Trump on them. Vice President you think Biden. That's good? I, Vice President Biden. Final question for you. Will you urge your supporters to stay calm while the vote is counted, and will you pledge? not to declare victory until the election is independently certified. Yes, and here's the deal. They count the ballots, as you pointed out. Some of these ballots in some states can't even be opened until election day. And if there's thousands of ballots, it's going to take time to do it. And by the Until then, thank you, and good night. Okay. I think we could say that was and that's the first presidential cringy. Debate that's the first time and only time you'll ever hear me use that word. Let's get the money shot here and, and that's it. President America has ever had. Biden appeared to become prepared for the night. Trump seemed perturbed. And so Trump's strategy tonight was to interrupt, to try and steamroll not only his opponent, but also the moderator, who was unable to keep control of the two candidates. I think one of the questions we're all asking tonight is, can we really have two more of these debates with the type of behavior that was displayed? Yeah, that, uh, yeah. Do you know what I was thinking? Yeah. Anyway. That they all probably want to drink after this, but all for very different reasons. I, 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 I think this TV probably should have been EOL during this, and if it, uh, it wasn't that it was uh, surprised it didn't carbon track and commit suicide. Anyway, that wraps up the four-part series on the RCA CTC 16. They've never been hired yet while a debate's still...